Okay, good morning. Uh, in the last lecture, we discussed about Newton's ring experiment and its applications. Uh, how we can use uh, interference pattern produced by the Newton's ring experiment to determine the wavelength and to determine the thickness of uh, a thin uh, plate of a given medium, basically. Now, uh, I introduce another experiment which is part of your uh, laboratory also, Michelson's interferometer. Uh, Michelson interferometer is a device to produce interference pattern uh, and through this uh, instrument we can determine wavelength of uh, a monochromatic source, we can determine the difference in the wavelengths produced by uh, a monochromatic source. We suppose if you have a show, a monochromatic source which produces <coughs> two wavelengths, which are very very uh, nearly spaced, then we can uh, determine the difference of these two wavelengths using the Michelson interferometer. Uh, then we can determine uh, refractive index of a, a gaseous medium or a liquid medium. Uh, we can also determine uh, the thickness of a, a thin uh, plate of a given medium and may, may be a, thick, uh, uh, a thin glass plate or some medium. So these are certain applications. Now before discussing the applications of this uh, interferometer, uh, I will give you a detail about what is the, the apparatus and how it works and how it produces the interference pattern. Now in this diagram anyway, if you look at the diagram, this S is the source of uh, monochromatic light. So this shows is uh, an engender in the laboratory setup. This is a sodium lamp. So we use sodium lamp at the You can use any other monochromatic source also. You cannot use white light because white light is not strictly <coughs> monochromatic. But any other source, any anyway, laser and all that you can use. But if you use laser as a uh, source in this kind of uh, setup, then you cannot use your eyes to uh, see the interference pattern. For that anyway, you need to have a projection on the wall or projection on the screen to see the interference pattern because laser light is harmful to your eyes. So anyway, the simplest source or easiest way uh, to perform this experiment is to consider the sodium lamp. So this is the sodium lamp and as you know sodium lamp is a, is a diverging source anyway so the rays coming in from uh, rays uh, originating from the sodium lamp they are like uh, diverging anyway or they appears like an accident, uh, like a point source basically. So to convert this point source into an extended source or a kind of a uh, light rays which are uh, which seem to be parallel anyway we use a convex lens in front of the uh, sodium lamp now the role of this convex lens is to make the rays parallel anyway so once uh, the light rays which are produced through the sodium lamp will pass through the lens convex lens and then after that they will be parallel to each other so you can see in here all the rays are parallel and they will behave identically basically there will be no no overlapping of these rays basically. So you have parallel rays after this convex lens. Okay? Now with the apparatus, uh, the experimental setup, what you see here, and anyway, I just describe the things here, you have a mirror M1 here, you have a glass plate G1, another glass plate G2, uh, then you have another mirror M2 and here it is a telescope. Okay? Through which you observe the pattern. Now when you look at the mirror M1, this is uh, an ordinary mirror anyway, but this is fixed on a scale and you can move this mirror. So this is kind of a movable mirror. By rotating some screws or some arrangement on the screen, you can move this mirror on this arm basically. Because this has now there is another mirror on this side which is mirror M2 which is kind of a fixed mirror anyway, you cannot, you can tilt that mirror anyway, but there is uh, an arrangement of screws behind that. So by uh, rotating those screws, you can see here anyway in the picture, so by rotating these screws anyway, you can just align the mirror. So basically this is a fixed mirror, but alignment can be made. This is a movable mirror, so it can move on the arm of the Michelson interferometer apparatus. And then at the same time there are screws behind that, so by which by rotating those screws you can set, uh, you, can, you, can, you can align the mirror also. Okay? So you can just change the angle of the mirror on, uh, or change the 
angle of incidence basically and the light rays incident angle. Now if you look at the glass plate given, this is of a very uniform thickness. So you have to be very precise in developing these glass plates. The glass plate is of uniform thickness and there is one more important point here. It is polished on the back surface. So if, the, if it is kept like this, then the surface which is a back surface and because the light rays are coming from this side. So this surface is polished partially silver dust or a silver polish is there so that it reflects as well as it allows to pass the light through it anyway. So it gives you some kind of a reflection as well as it, it allows the transmission. So, and there is another glass plate. This glass plate is known as compensating plate. Now, as it is clear from the name, why it is known as a compensating glass plate? Because this is used to compensate the part difference, additional part difference produced by the glass plate G1. Okay. Now, uh, now there is no 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 coating on the glass plate G2. This is completely a transparent glass plate. Okay. Now how it works anyway, I just and then there is a telescope. Okay, telescope is anyway just to see through the uh, apparatus anyway what is happening there, if there is an overlapping then what kind of ranges are obtained and then there is some arrangement by which we can move the mirror and then we can measure the result that by which distance the mirror has moved. Now uh, to understand uh, we consider we start from this the light this is your incident ray. Now when it strikes the glass plate even. Now remember one more point, these glass plates are kept at 45 degree angle. So whenever, uh, it's almost anyway you can see, if it is kept at a 45 degree angle then what will happen, if there is a reflection it will be having a 45 degree angle of reflection and finally you will have that this ray and this ray are uh, perpendicular. Both the rays are perpendicular. So that is the reason that we keep it at a 45 degree. So this ray is incident here. Now there is a refraction, and anyway, you can understand here that the light ray entered into the glass plate. Then at the back surface there is a reflection. Okay, because of the polished surface, the light ray goes on and it goes straight to the mirror and This is the first part. Sometimes this is known as a beam splitter also. Why it is known as a beam splitter? Because this is used to divide the incident beam into two parts. Okay, so one beam is just uh, incident. Uh, there is a reflection, and after the reflection, there is a reflection from the big surface, and light ray goes straight to the mirror angle. Now look at the second portion anyway. Because at this point, what is happening? After the reflection, the light may reflect. It may transmit also. Okay, so some portion of the light is transmitted anyway, and we keep the polishing. We keep this silver coating in such a way that there is almost a 50-50% reflection and reflection so that the intensity of the both the rays which is going to the mirror M1 and another ray which is going to the mirror M2 has a similar intensity anyway. So what is happening here? One ray goes to the mirror M1, another goes to the mirror to the, uh, towards the mirror M2. Now in the path anyway, there is a plate anyway, so the light ray passes through that, there is no silver coating anyway, so the reflection is very very small. It is mostly the refraction or transmission anyway, so this goes to the mirror M2 and as a mirror M2 is an ordinary mirror anyway, so it reflects back, it comes back and it strikes to this surface again, which is partially silvered anyway and then it is reflected towards the telescope, right? So this is about the second beam. Now the beam which goes to the mirror M1 comes back and follow the path through refraction only and comes to the telescope. So what is happening here? The ray is split here. Incident rays are split here. So there is uh, some portion is going to the mirror M2, some portion is going to the mirror M1. It comes back and reaches to the telescope. This also comes back and reaches to the telescope. Now since this is a common source, so beam the splitting anyway and you can understand this anyway, division of amplitude anyway. So this is uh, amplitude division is taking place here and as a result of division of amplitude, two 
different coherent rays are produced. One is going in this direction, another is going in this direction, and finally they are overlapping when they are meeting the path towards the telescope. And when you see through the telescope, you may observe the interference pattern, subject to the conditions are to the conditions of interference are satisfied. Now look at that, what is the role of this G2 plane basically. G2 is known as a compensating plane. Now suppose if this G2 plane is not there in the apparatus, then what happens anyway? Look at that. The ray which is going to the mirror angle, look at that, is passes through the plate completely and then reflected from the brake surface. So this passes through the plate once, then twice. Goes to the mirror and comes back. So it is passing through the plate G1 three times. The light ray which is going towards the mirror M1 and finally reaching to the telescope is passing through the glass plate Z1 three times. Now if you look at the, the ray which is going towards the mirror M2, it passes through Z1 once, then if this is not there, it comes back and goes to the telescope without passing through. When it is coming back anyway, it does not pass through the G2. So it is passing only once. So there is a wonder, as you know earlier, when, uh, a light, light, when the light passes through a medium anyway, it produces some additional part difference depending on the refractive index of that medium. So because of this, some additional part difference is produced and that may create some problem in your uh, in, in producing the interference pattern. So what we do here, we create an, another glass plate of the same thickness and same material and keep it in between the path of the ray which is going to the mirror and So what's happening here? That this light ray passes through once, goes here, pass, passes through the same thickness twice and when it comes back it is twice. So both the rays which are reaching to the telescope, they have they have passed through a same thickness glass plate thrice, thrice, thrice three times. So in this way, the part difference, the additional part difference produced in between the ray is almost same. And when they are all looking in, so the part difference will be identically zero anyway, then there will be a part difference calculation for the look, position of mirror and one and two. So this is why this is known as compensating plate, because this plate compensates the part difference. Is it clear? So when these rays are meeting here anyway, they are all looking in this reason, there will be circular fringes also. Okay? Now when you look at the circular fringe pattern anyway, I just show you, these kind of fringes will be also diagonal. The diagram is not very clear, but anyway, this is the dark center and then there are circular fringes surrounding the um, dark center. Now, what we do here to understand that why this, uh, how these fringes are being formed, to understand that we look at this diagram, which is very very simple. Now when you see through the instrument, what do you see? And I am just going back to the same figure again. Look at this. What do you see here? You see from this side anyway. So you keep your eye here and you look through the mirror number anyway. So when you are looking into the instrument, basically you are trying to observe the pictures, you are looking towards the mirror M1. Now mirror is mirror anyway. So what do you see here? Mirror M1 and the image of the mirror M2 also. So what you see here, you see mirror M1, you see mirror M2 also because, because of this partial reflection anyway. So what will happen? The image of mirror M2 will also appear here. And if you look at the next diagram, you are seeing through the telescope anyway or see. So this mirror M1 is actually present there in front of your eye and this is the image of mirror M2. So this is basically you feel or this is a virtual image or image which you see to M1 of, image, uh, of mirror M2 basically. Now what you see here, uh, when, when the, if, if these two mirrors are kept at the same distance anyway, ideally they are kept at the same distance and you can view the mirror M1 through this room anyway through the arrangement. So if the distance is completely zero or the difference between the distances is completely zero then what happens you see in the diagram anyway you can see that these two are overlapping now okay. or you can say the thickness because there is a thickness uh, thin film 
of air between the mirror M1 and M2 prime, which is basically the image of your uh, mirror M2. So if D is zero, this thickness is completely zero. If D, if if you move your mirror M1 by some distance D, then there will be some thickness or some air field will be present. Now if you remember anyway, thin film formula. Delta equals to 2 mu t cos r minus lambda y. Okay. Now this is the part difference in case of a reflection, uh, reflected reflected light. Now here what we are seeing, we have a similar situation here. Only uh, difference here is now in this diagram I have shown that what is the angle theta? Theta is an angle at which you are observing the phenomenon basically. So this is what you are observing through the uh, telescope anyway. So this is the direction of your telescope anyway or your eyesight anyway. You know, uh, eyesight or eyes are observing in this direction. So this angle is, so in this case anyway if you just compare, here it is theta. Mu is anyway, mu equals to 1 because it is here. And D, which is T here, now T is what? It's equals to D. D is the distance or D is the movement of the mirror angle because once uh, for a one for one position what is happening here? The, the, the mirror M1 and image of mirror M2 are coinciding here. And if you move your mirror, a difference or a part difference of D will be. Uh, anyway, the distance between the two images or the mirror and one and image of the mirror and two will be small d. Fine? So this is what, now if I substitute these values here, what happens? This becomes 2d cos theta minus lambda. So this is the part difference in this case. The part difference between the rays which are reaching to the telescope. So if there is an interference, then what will be the condition of interference and what will be the Condition of uh, condition of right range and condition of dark range. There is no 2d cos theta minus lambda 2 equals to m lambda. This is right and 2d cos theta minus lambda by 2 equals to 2 and plus 1 lambda by 2 is the dark. Now look at the situation when d equals to 0. When d equals to 0, the part difference is lambda by u and this condition is satisfied and the center would be dark anyway. So when the two mirrors means mirror m1 and the image of mirror m2 are coinciding, then the d equals to 0 and d equals to 0 means the part difference is actually lambda by 2, it can be plus lambda by 2, it can be minus lambda by 2 also. It means the condition of m equals to 0 is satisfied. So this is dark center. That's why in the diagram anyway, if you look at the fringes, the dark, the center is shown as a, as a dark. Okay. Now, now if you move your mirror now, now if you move your mirror by lambda by 4 distance. Okay, so if d equals to lambda by 4, what happens? Second thing, theta equals to 0 degree. Why is 0 degree? Because you look through the telescope, exactly, or you, you can consider this as a normal incidence in the thin field. So theta equals to 0, angle of reflection is 0 here. So in that case, if you move your uh, telescope by distance of lambda by 4, uh, if you move your mirror by distance of lambda by 4, then the, 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 the distance actually the ray passes through this thin film twice because it is a reflected light. So a 2D will be produced, so lambda by 2 part difference will be produced. Because it is 2D anyway, 2 minus lambda by 2 is a pain there. So if it is twice of D, so if it moves by a distance of lambda by 4, then the next ring will appear anyway, a bright ring will appear. Then if again if you move your mirror by lambda by 4, a dark bright dark bright so alternate fringes will appear in the uh, field of view. So you can just see through if, if your center is dark it means you can consider that 
situation as if uh, that mirror M1 and image of mirror M2 are coinciding with each other. So this is all about the mechanism how the fringes are produced. Now we move to the uh, yeah, one more thing anyway. Now if yeah, mirror M1 and M2 are perfectly perpendicular to each other anyway, so if both the bran bran branches anyway they are perfectly perpendicular anyway. In the, in the experimental setup they are really perpendicular to each other, but there is a possibility of taking this mirror. So if these two mirrors are completely perpendicular, they are aligned in such a way that they are completely perpendicular to each other, then you have circular fringes, okay, as I have already explained to you. But if they are not perpendicular anyway, there is a slight mismatch in the orientation, orientation then the fringes produced in the Michelson interferometer are termed as localized fringes, okay. Now what happens anyway, you can just see through this diagram, when this is the this is the situation between M1 and M2 prime. So this is this kind of an alignment is there. Then what happens? You will have fringes like this, power fringes. If they are aligned at an angle of 45 degree, then the straight fringes will appear. And if you change the alignment angle anyway, because earlier they were aligned like this. Now if they are aligned like this, then again the another uh, set of curves. Fringes will appear. So if you see through the telescope and if you find that the fringes are not circular or they are not forming a circular interference fringes, it means your mirrors are not aligned perpendicular. They are not perfectly perpendicular to each other. So you need to align the mirrors and then you will see the circular fringes at a particular orientation. When M1 and M2 primes are perfectly aligned. Okay? Now applications anyway. So how we can determine the wavelength? How we can do other uses? So applications now. First application is determination of wavelength. Okay. Now. To determine the wavelength, what we do, we use the same setup, we produce the circular fringes, okay? Now we see through the telescope and set our cross wire. Minus D1 equals to and 2 minus 
converted into lambda. Now if I represent this d2 minus d1 as d, this is n lambda and lambda equals to 2 d by n. Now n is basically number of phases. So what you are doing, you are measuring the location of your mirror and run through the scales which are provided with the minus and interferometer. Then keeping your eye on the center, you move the mirror M1 and you count the number of fringes which are appearing from the center or disappearing from the center because when you will move the, the, the screw which is provided or which is uh, given for the movement of the mirror M1 you will see that the fringes are coming from the center or fringes are disappearing um, in the center anyway so they are merging in the center so one way you will do it only, only either you will create the fringes or you will merge the fringes. So what you will do, keeping your eye on the center and you will count at how many fringes are appearing there if I move the mirror by a distance d. So what you will do, you will count either 10 or 20 or 30 fringes. So keep your eye on the center and move your mirror and simultaneously count the number of fringes which are appearing or disappearing. If n number of fringes are appearing, means uh, if you keep this number as a 20 or 30, then find out the distance by which your mirror has moved and using this formula you can find out the wavelength of the unknown shores I mean, or uh, the shores given to you. So this is first application, now moving to the second, the second application is So if I equate this to it, 
equations that it gives you m1 lambda 1 equals to m1 plus 1 lambda 2 or you can say m1 lambda 1 minus lambda 2 equals to
Now, when you use a white line in the Michelson interferometer setup, you don't see the uh, these clear interference fringes because uh, the fringe pattern due to all the lambda, all the wavelengths which are present in the white line, means there are seven different wavelengths. So because of that, there will be seven different patterns, fringe patterns, and all of them are superimposing each other with each other. But what you see, you will see the center clearly. Okay. Now when you see the center clearly, it means uh, the bright, the the, the the center fringe will be clearly observed on the screen. So you will not, first of all, the location of the mirror. Now suppose this distance is d or this is the some some location of the mirror M1 for which you have set the Michelson interferometer with your white light. Okay, so you have some center fringe there. Now you insert the glass plate, the thin glass plate whose thickness you want to measure. Now because of this insertion, additional part difference will be pro produced and the whole pattern will shift. And as a result of that, the, the, the center fringe which you have set earlier is also shifting. Okay? Now look through the telescope and simultaneously move back the mirror, move the mirror in such a way that you observe the earlier situation. Means before insertion of the glass plate. So you have to just set your uh, mirror or you have to move mirror till you observe the earlier pattern. Okay? Now measure the distance driven by the mirror. M1 in um, achieving that particular earlier location. Okay, so now you have a value D by which uh, the value of additional part difference you can say uh, produced by the thin glass plate. Now, if I use that as a as a formula, now replace your white light again with the sodium lamp and then move your mirror by the same distance which you have measured again okay, at the distance and then count the number of fringes how many fringes will be shifted or will be moved when you produce this additional part difference and as a result of that you can calculate the value of thickness which is so time you have with you and you know the reflective index you can find out the thickness of the thin glass plate by counting the number of fringes which are which are basically shifted. Okay. So counting the number of fringes simply is not possible. So we use white light as a reference. We first count the additional part difference produced and then we come back to the monochromatic light source and count the number of fringes and then we find out the thickness of the thin glass plate. Okay, this is how we do it. Then the fourth one, which is the last one anyway, finding the refractive index. Now in this case what we use, we use a thin glass tube and we fill that glass tube with the either a gaseous medium or a liquid medium. So the same formula is applicable because we are inserting a medium in between the path and as a result of that you have additional part difference produced. Now suppose if if, if the length of your glass tube which you are using then any of course you have to neglect the, the thickness of your uh, tube material. So if you are doing this mu minus 1 equals to m lambda. Now if l is the length anyway so I can Inserting in between 
and here we will count the number of fringes. We will count. Um, we have we have a knowledge about the thickness of the glass tube. We have the knowledge of the monochromatic light source. By using all these values on the right hand side, we can find out the refractive index of the medium. So these are uh, some of the applications of the Michelson interferometer. There are some advanced applications also. You can calibrate your better scale and so on and so. But they are little advanced in nature. So for you anyway, these four are uh, part of your curriculum. You you can perform these experiments in the laboratory anyway. Uh, as far as our laboratory session is concerned, we have experiment on the determination of the wavelength of monochromatic light. So the first application we will cover in the laboratory session. The rest of them requires little sophistication in the instruments that we will talk about in the remaining uh, application. This is all about the Michelson interferometer, its application and all that. Uh, and this is almost uh, the interference uh, topic is completely covered in the series of lectures which I have given. Uh, the diffraction and polarization has been covered by Mr. Professor and Dr. Professor in a in a different set of lectures. Okay. So now I will uh, give you uh, lectures on the either the quantum mechanics or the electromagnetic field.